Hi, my name is Maria and I am a student at William and Mary. Um, and today I have the honor of telling the story of Harriet Fortin Purvis, a notable abolitionist and suffragist who lived during the 1800s. So we'll go ahead and get started. So who was Harriet Fortin Purvis? Well, she was born in 1810 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and spent her life working as an abolitionist and suffragist. She was especially known for establishing the first biracial women's anti-slavery society, which we'll talk about uh, very soon. And this is actually a picture of her from around 1874. Harriet Fortin Purvis's story wouldn't be complete without mentioning her family and how her family influenced and supported her work. She was born into the Fortin family, which was one of the most powerful and wealthiest Black families in Philadelphia at the time. They were known for hosting very elegant gatherings and fundraising events and for having lots of other important abolitionists at their home as guests. Interestingly, there's a lot of information about how Harriet and her sisters were expected to be very poised and graceful in order to impress the people joining them at their house. It is also really interesting and important to note that the women of the family were very much supported and empowered to participate actively in the abolitionist and suffragist movements, even though in lots of in instances, Black women were excluded from suffragist and abolitionist movements alike. Notably, in 1832, Harriet married Robert Purvis, who was another very well-known abolitionist, and the two of them became um, really a team when it came to their abolitionist efforts, and we'll talk about some of those later. As mentioned before, Harriet played a very important role in founding the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. Um, 18 women actually played a part in the founding of it in 1833, and included in this group were Harriet, her sisters Sarah and Margareta, and their mother Charlotte. Um, at the time, women weren't allowed to join the American Anti-Slavery Society, so these women organized their own. It was the first biracial female anti-slavery society, which is really notable because historically Black women had been excluded from all male abolitionist spaces and all white feminist spaces. This one, though, was inclusive. The women of the organization organized fundraisers, they wrote petitions, they held meetings and forums, and a lot more to advocate for abolition and for equality. The organization was disbanded after the 15th Amendment was passed in 1870, which uh, mandated universal male suffrage in the United States. Aside from the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society, Harriet Fortin Purvis was involved with many organizations and movements. With her husband, Robert, the two of them ran an under, underground railroad station from their home, which means that they hosted a great deal of formerly enslaved people at their home to help them find freedom. They also worked closely with the American Equal Rights Association in supporting both abolition of slavery and female suffrage. Harriet and Robert Purvis also worked closely with the Pennsylvania State Equal Rights League to advocate for the desegregation of streetcars in Philadelphia. And because of their advocacy, eventually all Philadelphia public transportation was in fact integrated. Um, Harriet Fortin Purvis also worked with the Free Produce Society and boycotted produce that was picked by enslaved persons as she believed it was important to not show any hypocrisy in what she advocated for and what kind of products she used. So as we've explored today, Harriet Fortin Purvis was an incredibly influential woman and her achievements and her work deserve a great deal of recognition. Thank you so much for taking the time to view this video today and to learn a little bit more about Harriet Fortin Purvis. Here are the references that were used for this project. Um, I encourage you to check these out if you'd like to learn more and to do some research of your own and stay tuned for the rest of the stories being told by um, students through the 11th project. Thank you so much.